Welcome everybody to day nine of Be a Builder. As you know, we are going step by step to build an app from start to finish. Join us tomorrow for the very last day of Be a Builder. Definitely share your progress on Twitter using that hashtag Be a Builder for a chance to win prizes. All right, so for day eight, we learned how to leverage the app exchange and custom components to really enhance our app. For day nine, we're gonna look at how best to create reports and dashboards so that our users and executives really get the data they need in a way that's easy to digest and analyze. Let's go hear from admin evangelists, Leanne Rymel and Mark Baseman to learn how to do this. Thanks, Rebecca. I'm Leanne, and I'm joined by the awesome Mark Baseman from our evangelism team. Thanks for oh, being yeah. here, Mark. You bet. So we're here to talk about how you can use reports and dashboards to take your app building to the next level. So we have users that are adding apps, we've made it really customized for them, optimize their user experience, and make sure the data is clean. But the end result is that we want to be able to report on these metrics, we want to be able to report on this data and make it visible, especially to usually our stakeholders and our leadership and our users who want to have access to that data. That's right. So Mark, when you're starting to build reports and dashboards, what do you usually start with and think about first? So obviously I want to make sure that I understand the business problem that we're trying to solve, right? So talking to those stakeholders, making sure that you understand what the metrics are that they would like to see. Um, but one of my favorite tips for building reports and dashboards is creating one report to rule them all. So basically one report can feed multiple dashboard components. I think the tendency, especially when you first start, is you create a report for this and a report for that and a report for that. But you can have the same matrix report or summary report feed a whole bunch of different dashboard components. And that saves you, the admin, a ton of work because when they, people want changes, as inevitably happens, that you can make changes to the component rather than changes to the underlying report. I think mean, that's a great tip. I think having one big report, often the dashboard is looking at one large set of data um, for me building, say, a project dashboard. And so having one report, because not only does it reduce load for the builder, but also it ensures that you're all looking at the same data. Because often we see if people are building multiple reports, maybe using different report types, and then also maybe having different filters, those are things that can contribute to different uh, data being returned and not having kind of synced up components and synced up data in your dashboard. And then you have to spend time going to figure out, well, what report did you run? What was your filter criteria? Exactly. And that's just a waste of time. Now, I also love the one report to rule them all because I think you should take it one step further and when appropriate, have one dashboard to rule them all. Mm, because, say more about that. <laughs> because the dashboards, the dashboard filters and setting running users of dashboards, you can actually create a dashboard that can be used for a lot of different scenarios. So I'm a big fan of using filters in dashboards. And what that means is adding a filter on your dashboard where you can then define maybe what groups of users you want to look at, what types of records you want to look at. A very popular one is to add a filter for time. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to create a new dashboard for Q1, Q2, Q3, or right. January, February, right. March. You create one dashboard and then you just have a filter that allows you to toggle between those times. I've created filters for like geographic region is also a real popular one. And uh, yeah, like time, right, year. Right, so what are sales this year, sales last year, those sorts of things. Awesome. So when we built this awesome dashboard and we've added our report, one report to rule them all, we've added all our dashboard filters, we also want to fine tune it for our users because right. a lot of this doesn't really matter if our users aren't engaging with it. And so I personally love using the dashboard feed. So if you have feed enabled for your dashboards, and you can do that in setup, searching for feeds, um, some of your chatter settings, and you can enable feed on your dashboard, which means that you can just slide out that uh, conversation panel on the dashboard. And one of the things that I like to do is to start with actually a lot of components. Hmm, that like sounds to... confusing. Why would I want to start with a lot of components? Well, often people don't know exactly what they need to see on a dashboard, especially if it's new users and people who haven't worked with Salesforce dashboards. And so I like to understand what is the data set that they want to look at. And I ask them those questions, you know, what types of records do they need to see? What is kind of the data set they're looking for? And then often they don't know exactly how they want it displayed. And so I'll display it in a few different ways. And maybe I'll display some stack ranking, maybe I'll use some table components, some gauge components. And 
I try to give them a lot of options of how to look at the data, and then I ask for feedback, and I ask them, what are those components that you really liked on here? That's the key step, right? So you're building this dashboard with, say, you know, nine different components, and maybe you have one huge component and a bunch of small ones, but you're asking for feedback. So mm -hmm. if people think that that's the final dashboard, it could be really busy and intimidating. But if you're getting that feedback, maybe you're shadowing someone by doing mm -hmm. Salesforce by walking around, then what you can do is trim that dashboard down, make it super valuable, but you've given people the data that they want to see in the way that they want to display it. Exactly. And if there's components that they don't look at or they don't want to see, I take them off the dashboard. I mean, I'll ask, I'll survey and say, hey, is this component useful for you? Do you even check this component? Is it you know kind of below the line? Or I'll ask them another way to kind of get that answer is to say, which components do you want to have at the top, right? So right. maybe like say, right. let me know three or four components that you'd like to have at the top. That helps you understand like what are the ones you're going to first and they care the most about. Right. And then you can fine tune it so that every part of the dashboard is really useful and really meaningful. And you can have that conversation in the chatter feed on the dashboard itself. Which is great to not track down additional prices. Well, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Mark, creator you of awesome Thanks dashboards everyone. for sharing your tips. And go forth and build some awesome dashboards. Dashboards are awesome. Thank you, Leanne and Mark, for sharing some key best practices for creating dashboards. To summarize, I learned, one, a great best practice is to build one report to feed all your dashboard components. One report to rule them all, if you will. This will reduce dashboard maintenance and room for error. Two, Enable the dashboard feed and setup so you can collaborate with your users and optimize the dashboard on an ongoing basis. And three, give your users more flexibility and insight with dashboard filters. Common filters are different time periods and geographic locations. All right, so now it's your turn. Earn the reports and dashboards module on Trailhead to gain a thorough understanding of what you can do with reports and dashboards and then build some for your own app. And join us tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific time for the very last day of our Be a Builder adventure, where we will talk about best practices for making your app mobile. Talk to you then.